Hello, dear students. Today we are going to revise the arrival of British in India. There are four major topics. As you can see, I have written it on the board. Battle of Plassey, Battle of Buxar, Subsidiary Alliance and Doctrine of Lives. How it, these policies or how these battles have changed the future course of India that we are going to learn today. Actually, you have already learned. We are going to revise it today. Okay. Talking about the Battle of Plassey. The Battle of Plassey was fought in 1757. Now, 1757 was the year when Battle of Plassey was fought. Now, in 1757, the commander in chief of the British East India Company was Robert Clive. So Robert Clive was the leader of the British East India Company and this war was fought or battle was fought between the Nawab of Bengal of that time Sirajud Dolla and British East India Company. Okay. Now what has happened in that battle you all know that Mir Jafar because of Mir Jafar the commander in chief of the Sirajud Dolla's army was acted as a traitor and because of that uh, Sirajudola was not able to defeat the British East India Company and the battle Sirajudola lost against Robert Clive. So what has happened after that? The area as I am indicating the area also because of the defeat in the battle of Plassey British East India Company got Diwani rights. Diwani rights means right to collect taxes from the people directly. So this right British East India Company got because Sirajudola was defeated in the battle. Diwani rights they got it means that the region this much region of India the battle of Plassey this was Bengal. The Battle of Plassey has actually given this the Diwani rights of this much region of India to the British East India Company that they can directly collect taxes from the people. Okay, and Mir Zafar was made the Nawab of Bengal by British East India Company. Then Mir Jafar was replaced by Mir Kasim because Mir Jafar was not able to follow all the rules, conditions which were set by British East India Company. So Mir Qasim was made the Nawab. Again Mir Qasim was also replaced. During this process what happened, Mir Jafar thought that he can take help from the other ruling Nawabs. So beside Bengal there was a state, the, the state was Awadh. At that time it was known as Awadh. O U D H Awad. Awad was ruled by Sujaud Dola. And during that time, the Mughal emperor was Shah Alam II. So Shah Alam II, Sujaud Dola, and Nawab of Bengal, all the three have made a treaty kind of thing. They all they combined their forces and they fought out again a war against the British East India Company in 1764. So Battle of Buxar was fought in 1764. Here also the British East India Company was able to defeat all the three rulers and so what they got? When they defeated all the three rulers they got again Diwani rights of Bengal already they were having Diwani rights they now get Diwani rights of Awadh region also and Mughal Emperor Shah Alam was given 26 lakh rupee as pension by the British East India Company means all the areas which were under the Mughal Emperor now those areas have to pay taxes to the British East India Company and in return British East India Company will pay 26 lakh rupee to the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam. Right. So now what has happened that this much area they got they also here 
three states are important to mention bihar bengal and odisha bengal uh, bihar bengal and odisha all the three states diwani rights were taken by british east india company so now the extension you can see that all is under the control uh, bengal was under the control now this much region has also got under control by the british east india company this was odisha region okay then comes subsidiary alliance now subsidiary alliance was introduced by lord wellesley in 1798 in 1798 lord wellesley introduced the subsidiary alliance now in subsidiary alliance it was kind of a scheme that the british east india company will protect the entire state or a kingdom in return the kingdom or the emperor or the nawab has to sign a treaty under the treaty that treaty was subsidiary alliance under the treaty the british east india company the army of the british east india company will reside in the king's fort or palace and they need to be paid by the nawabs or the kings also in the subsidiary alliance the nawabs or the kings will not have any right to sign any treaty with other kingdoms means external control of the empire or the kingdom was taken by the british east india company and nawabs were become more and more they started enjoying their life they were not looking at the future that what will happen what will be the outcome of this treaties or outcome of the subsidiary alliance so under the subsidiary alliance the uh, governor general of india lord wellesley was able to get hyderabad the hyderabad region they got they got mysore region and by that time the maratha empire was divided into four parts holkar sindhya bhosle and gaikwad holkar sindhya were in the center bhosle were in the maharashtra present day maharashtra region and gaikwad in the uh, which was later on become baroda state so in gujarat so this region also they got diwani rights uh, uh, sorry they also got some control over this region under the subsidiary alliance they got this region right then in 1848 when lord dalhousie become the governor general of india lord dalhousie has introduced a new policy which was known as doctrine of lapse in doctrine of lapse if the emperor doesn't have a heir means a successor of the blood then the entire empire will be annexed by the british east india company and under this policy a lot of empires or kingdoms were annexed notably satara has gone there was a state called satara jaipur beside jaipur there was udaipur here bahad in up and jhansi here nagpur okay and this many area now see this was under the british east india company see how the britishers or british east india company they entered in india as traders and then they started controlling the administrative system of india they started to controlling the ruling or the entire states or kingdoms you can see how it has impacted see the impact you can see india this much portion of india which were ruled by different kings and emperors or nawabs this much region under these four things like battle of plassey battle of buxar subsidiary alliance and doctrine of lapse all these policies or battles has had given this much portion of india to the british east india company now you can see this was under the british east india company 
and the last governor general not the last but the person who has introduced this doctrine of left first lord delhouse in 1848 now because of this 1848 when doctrine of lapse introduced in india and britishers has started get uh, collecting more and more taxes from the people because of that there were a lot of famine and a number of people have been killed or died due to the lack of food and they were not able to pay taxes which the british east india company was demanding because of that and a lot of rulers nawabs kings and queens have been Uh, thrown away out of their kingdoms in the name of subsidiary alliance or in the name of doctrine of lapse so because of all these things a kind of feeling to rebel against the east india company has started increasing and it has given a new shape to the future course of india that 1848 doctrine of lapse and this was the policy which has you know uh, displaced a lot of rulers who were ruling different kingdoms in india this was resulted into the revolt of 1857 the revolt of 1857 now revolt of 1857 is important because first time in india most of the rulers have joined their hands together to fight against a company british east india company and in 1857 there was a, uh, there were a lot of revolts from different parts of india and that has resulted that has changed the entire company like in 1857 when after the revolt the revolt was definitely was crushed by the british east india company because they were having more technology they were having guns a lot of people were in support of the british east india company so and because of their tactics they have defeated a lot of people they have killed a lot of people but these things has resulted into the change of the administrative system of the british east india company that you can say that from 1757 to 1857 i am writing here from 1757 to 1857 british east india company British East India Company was in the administrative role of India and after the revolt of 1857 from 1857 to 1947 when India became independent from 1857 to 1947 India was ruled by the British government means directly the british parliament has started ruling india from uh, 1857 to 1947 so you can in general you can conclude that the british time in india was started actually from 1757 and ended in 1947 if you add all these around 100 and 90 years i think 190 years britishers have ruled india 1757 to 1857 british east india company has ruled and from 1857 to 1947 till the time india got its independence british parliament or british government had ruled india okay thank you thank you very much